Okay, continuing where we left off at. We just got done creating the body for the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, got a little cold going on, but for the body of the chandelier, and I just refined the shape a little bit, gave it a little bit of an inside, and a little bit of a top so that um, we can connect something to it since it's going to be hanging from a ceiling. But now the next part that we want to start on is getting these these little I'm, I'm just going to call them connectors so to create those I mean it would be obvious to use a spear but due to the limitations of you know the shapes I mean of what you can get out of a spear you know through a lot of editing and such we're just going to use a cube and I'm going to show you a creative way to get this whole shape with a cube. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the shortcut key, which is control one, which is for, you know, like subdivision level one, two, three, four, or whatever number you're going to use. You just hold control and press a number. Three is too much. Two. Two is two looks pretty good to me. Apply it. Now let's see. Now here's the magic part. To uh, really get these intricate shapes, we're going to first. I need to isolate it by hitting the slash key on my uh, numpad, and then I'm just going to instead of manually select, use circle selection with C. Select these. Delete those spaces, which your loop tool is enabled. And if you don't have it enabled, you go to user preferences, add-ons, and just type in loop. Uh, I forgot the P. Mesh loop tools. You hit the check button right here and save user settings. All right, and you press W to see it and circle all right so now we got that part go back to front view now what we're going to do is extrude on the x-axis to about right here i think that's about enough <clears throat> change your selection to face extrude cancel we're going to scale it on shift y Let's see, is that, let's see if that's the correct axis. Shift Y. Uh, it's looking a bit weird. Let's see. Shift X. There we go. There we go. Now that's looking correct to me. So I'm going to add an, egg, uh, an extra edge to help with retaining the shape. And then I'm going to add one around right here. And then. Let me see. Let me add another subdivision and change my shading to smooth. Now, let's see. I definitely want to add a loop here, but we don't want to make it too hard. And I'm going to do it right here because you're not going to be seeing this part. And actually, hmm, I'm going to remove this. I like the little softness that it has right there. <clears throat> All right, now that's looking good to me. So let's go out. And we're going to scale this down. Give it a little bit of, uh, what's that word? A little bit of an uh, intersection, and let's see. You're just gonna scale it down, try to get it, you know, right in the center, and then we're just gonna put it a little close, possibly a bit more. Let's go into the front view, a bit more of an intersection. There we go. 
Now, the next thing to really do with this is we're going to add a array modifier because if I count it, if I count this right, it's about one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So we're going to use that array. We're going to change our number to six. All right, now we got something funky going on. It's all lined up in a straight line, which is because of relative offset, which is what we don't want to use. So uncheck that. But now to really get that, it's going to stay right in the right in position and it's going to rotate along uh, our shape. We're going to use a empty plane. And that's going to be our object. I don't know if you can see that clearly, but our object offset is going to be from what our empty is going to do for us. And before I do anything, I want to name that empty to connect, <coughs> excuse me, connector one in case of, you know, I, I'm naming it connector one in case we have to make another one. And you know, it's good for naming conventions to name your objects when you create them. So, okay, now we got something else going on that's pretty weird. So what we're gonna do next, I think it's our, yep, our location, our scale is a bit off. So we're gonna apply it, location, scale and then also it's because of our origin our origin wasn't in the center so we're going to check the same with our where our empty and we need to apply the location so let's apply that and it puts it to the center which i, I guess it's not really much of a problem down there i mean there's other ways to really Simplify it, but let's just see what it gives us for right now. All right, good. It actually does work. So we're just gonna take this about fully around it. Let's make sure it's decent, right? Cause those that's still awful. Lopsided. Um. All right, that looks good. All right, so now we got these uh, connectors, multiple connectors. We're not gonna apply our array for reasons because you know you may wanna change how many you want. You may wanna add more, or you may wanna change you know the actual shape to something else. So keep that in the meantime. Don't apply it. So now next part would be to add this uh, extender. I'm just gonna call it an extender. So we're gonna use for the extender, we're gonna use a Bezier, Bezier curve. And let me change it to front. And I'm gonna rotate it on the Y axis. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm going to adjust this scale it on x-axis as flat and I'm gonna to go to the actual settings of it change it to full and increase the depth and then I'm gonna I'm gonna change the resolution to about six six looks about fine and then I'm gonna move this up so that it's flush and then I'm gonna modify the uh, settings for the depth okay it's not supposed to <laughs> just jut out like that so let's uh, let's bring it down some more okay it looks fine right here okay so now we're just going to adjust it it may be a little too big so I'm gonna down to about right there and also we're going to array this as well but we're just going to take our time with getting the shape correct so a couple of 
couple extrusions. I mean, you can really play around and get whatever shape design you like. I'm just going to try to stay a bit faithful to what the image is, what the reference image is showing as best I can. And eyeballing it, you know, as best I can. So let's just say about right there. And let's do one more extrusion. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can constrain it. Uh, it looks a little odd. So I'm going to say right there and this. Now, pull some of this over. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna say that's that's good right there. I'm gonna say that's done. Uh, actually, a little bit of a tweak. There we go. All right, I like that. <laughs> so now it looks like. This is the this is almost the exact same shape as our connector, so I'm going to duplicate that. Um, oops. I'm going to Shift D, select everything, and let me see. It's rotated, so I'm going to rotate it. Oops, wrong wrong degrees. Um, rotate it on the Y. There we go. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I need to bring our our extender up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now that looks about right. Now, I can add this little circle in there. I mean, it wouldn't well actually it won't really take from what we're doing so let's just see if we circle this up and extrude it up hmm and it seems like it has a uh, let me disable this it has a hard edge at the bottom so let's see what we get. And oh yeah, if you hear fireworks, it's the Fourth of July. <laughs> I almost forgot to mention that earlier. Happy Fourth of July to everybody. But anyways, back to the tutorial. Let's see. Hmm. Probably we'll just get rid of this and. Let's scale it inward. To make, you know, a little nice circle. And then I'm gonna say, let's see, merge it center. And I'm just gonna bevel some of this just to better off the transition. It's not the well. Well, actually, I don't like the, I don't like the triangles, so I'm gonna delete that. Um, turn proportional editing on, and just have this fine tune the shape. There we go. See, right about there. Proportional editing is definitely a good tool to use from time to time. I wouldn't say like, you know, spam it on every every single aspect of your modeling, but at times it does do the job. All right, so that's good so far. And it's not looking much of a problem right there. Okay, 
So now what we must do, we're going to do the exact same thing off of the other part where we're going to use an array modifier on here, an array, and we're going to do about six, we're going to turn off relative, and then we're going to make sure we apply our location, rotation, and scale. So we're going to apply those so that our origin is in the center. And then we're going to add another empty. And we're going to call this empty extender. Uh, uh, extender. Hopefully I'm spelling that right. <laughs> Extenders with S. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna use our, oops, um, where is it? There we go. Our extenders, select extenders. Now we're gonna most likely have to do the exact same thing. If I can find it now, come on. Where is it? There we go. Now, yeah, we're gonna have to do the same thing to fix our location and then we're going to rotate it just like we did before Oops. sometimes the rotation of getting this can be a pain I'm just using the uh, keyboard and holding forward just to get this a bit more precise without messing up too much and then I'm just gonna see. all right that looks just about good to me all right so we're going to move on to the next part in the next video, and I hope you look forward to it. All right.